Hi, this is Tom Olsuski with EXP Realty and Zillow Premier Agent. So there's been some confusion over what a buyer has to sign when they go to view a property. So we have made the process simple. It's just a one page document. It is not a full blown buyer broker representation agreement. Although I would love to get to that point somewhere down the road, but we've got to know each other, uh, get to know each other first. And I don't work with everybody and everybody may not want to work with me. So our brokerage exp realty has come up with uh, what's called the single property buyer broker representation agreement it is strictly just tied to one property so this agreement is designed to allow a buyer to engage a qualified licensed professional for the purpose of viewing property and receiving contract negotiation and advocacy services through the entire real estate offer and purchase process for the property described below. So when you want to see a property, I'll have that property address plugged in here. Length of the agreement, it's basically um, tied to the property. There isn't really an end time to it. Agency disclosure. Uh, agency relationship between buyer and broker determines how broker will work on the buyer's behalf. Broker's agency relationship with buyer is disclosed and documented in a separate disclosure form. That's typically disclosed when we write an offer or if we do a full-blown buyer-broker representation agreement. And the main purpose of this is this all came about from the August uh, 17th deadline where there was a massive lawsuit between National Association of Realtors and all the big brokers and they now require us to have this document. And I like it because it, it re removes confusion about who's working with who and agency is very important. So there is the amount or rate of real estate commissions is not fixed by law. They are set by each broker individually and may be negotiable between the seller and the broker. So in years past, uh, the seller paid and it was clearly defined what uh, the listing agent, uh, listing broker was going to receive and what the buyer broker was going to receive and this lawsuit caused this to be separated so in general nothing's going to change the seller will still uh, pay the buyer broker fee in most cases but they don't necessarily have to and if the market shifts and it gets to something like what we had in uh uh, 2021 where there were lines out the doors as soon as a property came on the market to take a look at it uh, if it's a strong sellers market the seller paying the buyer broker fee may go out but in today's market it's um, it's still slightly a seller's market but um, there's more homes to choose from there's more competition so it's it's relatively flat. So um, in this document, uh, the broker fee will never exceed the amount specified below. If a buyer enters into an agreement to purchase the property within 90 days following the expiration or early cancellation of this agreement, then the buyer shall pay the broker fee uh, to broker upon closing. So I put 3% here but it's going to vary from property to property and it's negotiable and I am going to potentially reduce that to make your offer more viable in a competitive situation. Because now part of what a seller is looking for is they're looking what's their bottom line what are they going to net after all the fees are paid and if one offer has a very high um, 
broker compensation and another one is much lower and there's a big difference the sellers potentially going to go with the lower offer so i will adjust that as uh, needed um, and we're not tied to that so it talks about for the best experience buyer is encouraged to work exclusively with broker concerning the purchase of property and to be accompanied by broker on the first visit to the property and to conduct all negotiations for the property in good faith and exclusively through the broker. So it is a possibility in California where a buyer could potentially work with the listing agent. But FYI, uh, the listing agent first signs an agency agreement to represent the seller. So as you come in as a buyer, yeah, it, the, you know, in general, everybody's going to say, yeah, we'll treat everybody fairly, but it doesn't quite work that way because the agent working for the listing agent, uh, their job is to get the home sold for um, top dollar and a buyer's agent is typically going to look to get the best deal. On a property so there's there's a conflict of interest and so I highly recommend if not with me work with a um, buyer's agent so you have exclusive representation in a transaction so we're gonna have a signature um, buyer one buyer two is going to sign and then I'm going to sign as the representative for the buyer's broker so that's it. Hopefully this will clarify some things um, in real estate. Everything's negotiable, but the one thing in today's market that's not negotiable is every buyer is going to have to sign something to see a property. And you don't necessarily have to fully commit to a buyer's agent until you get to know them, see what advantages they bring to the table. Um, and in this case, it gets us um, able for you to take a look at the property uh, without any long-term commitment. So again, hopefully that helps. Any questions, please feel free to reach out to me. I will have this uh, video on my YouTube channel um, where I will gladly share it if there's any questions on these documents. So thanks for watching. Have a great day.